I got to skate X Games and somehow won X Games. And from that point, it was kind of just, everything went. It was so trippy, man. I was just so, not taken back, I was excited. I was, I was so excited and just felt so lucky that, that it was actually gonna happen. My close friends, they're with me every step of my life. It, it's crazy how the people that end up in our crew are, are very active, very into sports, and, and just want to have a good time, you know? There's no downers in our group. Tony, I've known Tony since I was in kindergarten. We always skated, and we always got in trouble together. He's always kind of been my wingman, for sure, going to the movies and sneaking out, and it's always entertaining with Tony. He's so funny and so full of energy, and just his just demeanor is, is amazing. I wish we could have filmed snowboarding with these guys. Ow! I burnt my lip. You know, we've done everything together. We travel together, go to contests together, we go out together, we hang out, we're here all the time. It's, we never really are apart, so anything I've done, they've done, basically. Skating definitely brought me and Ryan together just because we were so, we were so competitive about it, you know, and not, not many people treated skateboarding with a competitive, you know, mind state, his mental aspect on it. Ryan made skateboarding basically a competitive sport just because of how he treated it. He wanted to change skateboarding in a way that it can, it's, it's also, it's fun, but it can also be serious at the same time, you know? You can make a living off skateboarding if you're committed to it, you know? Seventeen years, the field's never been as stacked as it was yesterday. This was already going to be tough coming into it. And then now, today, it's kind of the same story. We have ten of the best skateboarders in the world. Um, Nyjah, Chaz Ortiz, Greg Lutzka, Ryan, Balto. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be a really, really good final. Boards. Is it ready to go? Let yeah, me have that. You're gonna have to put one. To, that's all we got. What? Oh I'll switch. It. Don't worry about that. Oh, there's one there. Oh fuck, dude, you're a god. Let me have the other one. You want me to put your other trucks on one of these decks? Fuck, dude, I have one minute. If that. I, we Son of a right, we got about five more minutes. Five minutes, give me one. Well, I don't have a board, dude. You're gonna have to use one of the decks, and then we can. We don't have a single deck that he rides. It's real professional. Real good. The worst thing in contests 
in any contest for any person is a broken part on something. Five minutes before the final started, and that was crunch time. Uh, no, it's not, Ryan. That is, you feel this. Well, it was cold. It still is going to be colder than that. Randy, get that other shirt on. I'm working on it, Steven. Fuck, Steve, what do you That's want, it. bro? I mean, the reason I, I have so much respect for Ryan, even at, even though he's so much younger than me, and as not only an athlete, as a human being, is um, A, he cares about his family and friends uh, more than most people I've ever met, and B, he's the most com competitive son of a bitch I've ever met, too. You know, when you get close to these guys, that's the, the part that strains on me most in life, you know? You cry with them, you smile with them, you stress with them. Um, and Ryan wears his emotions on his sleeve pretty good at a contest if he does bad or if he's hurt and he fights through it. And, you know, the Ryans of the world, the Pastron, I mean, they don't want to lose. He's a consummate fighter, no matter what happens and no matter what he has to deal with. And that board breaking a few minutes before we had to go to finals, I'm sure, and I haven't spoke to Ryan directly about that, but I'm sure Ryan's thinking, okay, God was testing me one more time to see how I was gonna react. How was I gonna be? How am I gonna overcome this particular board breaking and get into this game and ultimately win a gold medal? My parents were the biggest influence. You know, I would be nowhere. They dropped everything just to, you know, follow whatever we wanted to do. You know, my dad would work all week and, you know, my mom was working too and she would take us to all the contests and dad would come up and meet us, you know, for the actual day. So, you know, my dad runs a computer, an oscillator company. He's an engineer, so he does that. He's just, he's my pops. He's always there, always there if I need him. Uh, my mom is loving, caring, funny, and she's a hard worker. She definitely takes a lot of pride in working for the foundation and we bicker and fight at times because it is that mom manager type deal and uh you know but we get through it fine she knows i love her i know and uh you know i know she loves me so we kind of just we cruise as you know gretchen and i are divorced we've been divorced for almost four years now i think the kids have adapted well and they've adapted well because gretchen and i have stayed steadfast on keeping it very amicable. We're both so intimately involved with our children's lives that the divorce, as unfortunate as it is, became problematic to the family. It happened, and now we all work together to make it as best as you possibly can. When the parents got divorced, I think it affected Ryan the most because he was at that age to where it's kind of, you kind of had that concept of, of marriage and you know what, what marriage is supposed to be like and, and how much how much your mom and dad when they're married how much of an influence they have on your kids and and I think Ryan was so concerned about Shane and Kane to where he almost let out too much anger on his parents. It was hard for him because he, he knew that Kane had didn't know what was going on and, he, and and Shane also was a little bit younger than him so Shane he wanted to make sure Shane was happy and I think it I think it affected Ryan's life enormously but once he hit a certain age where he realized you know that's the way it is and you know that's life when it gets that close to a contest or it gets close to a big day where i know i have to go skate something i kind of just drowned it out now where i was before i can never get away from that because i love my family so much but at the end of the day it's like i have to I have to take care of myself. If I'm not on my A game when I'm going out to skate these big things, I'm gonna get hurt. And that takes away from me being able to take care of my family. And, you know, so nowadays I just kinda take it all with a grain of salt, listen to my mom and listen to my dad's side and listen to Shane's stuff and just, all right, you guys, cool. Like, call you guys at six o'clock and then flush it all out and then just get ready to go skate and, you know, try to keep it out of my head as, as much as possible.
Love you, buddy. I'm so proud. I didn't even know. You got Sorry, it, dude. Bro. No, no, no. Don't, don't ever say that. Don't ever say that. After Ryan achieves a, a bronze medal in the X Games, it's our ninth appearance in the X Games. He's a 21 years old. And we're leaving with this cloud of dismay, if you will, on how it all happened and how he didn't achieve what he wanted to achieve, which was gold, how he was trying to comprehend how to be happy with his own performance. He and I walked out for a little while, and he and I, we just shared about, he shared how he wasn't happy, how he felt he let everyone down, and I shared the other side, how we were all ecstatic for him and proud of him. That's where that went. I've said it before a thousand times, I tell you, the kid is a perfect storm. It's not only a desire to win, it's a desire to, to give back and be a philanthropist, and it's a desire to be a loving brother to his brothers, and it's his desire to be a loving son to his mom and I, and you know, sometimes it gets overwhelming. If I could change anything in my life, <sighs> nah, I wouldn't. I just try not to be, you know, try not to be a butthead, dude. I just try to be, treat people how they want to be treated. And, you know, I like to, I like to think I'm pretty good at it, you know, just being, just being myself. I don't judge anyone. You know, I feel like I have a lot more to learn and a lot more to give the skateboard world and fans, and God willing, I stay healthy and stay on my board. That's all I'm planning on doing is landing tricks. You know, I'm not done yet, not by any means.